Thank you to the organizer for inviting me to speak today and to participate in the in the program. Um, I'm going to talk about some idea we share with Ricardo Deca uh, during pandemia. <laughs> and um, I say uh, I said um, idea which is for me more important than project because we, we have an idea. We don't know if it's a, a great idea, but it was one about uh, to to take a trace, traces uh, or, or some indication of uh, of quantum friction, uh, not measuring directly the force mechanically the force, if not me measuring some quantity uh, with the information coming from friction. Um, uh, the idea of the talk is after some review, quick review about vacuum fluctuation and, and effects, I'll summarize some results on, on quantum frictions, friction and explain our, uh, our proposal. Um, okay, the, everybody knows uh, what are we talking about when mentioned vacuum fluctuation and these uh, induced effects. In particular, I only refer to these three effects, the usual Casimir effect, like uh, the more, the well-known result for parallel plates or for, in general, two neutral bodies, and the dynamical Casimir effect, which is another very interesting effect, uh, which arise, arise when we have a non-adiabatic movement of a mirror, um, and finally, I'll mention quantum friction, like a phenomenon, phenomenon when two bodies moving one with respect to the other at a constant velocity, uh, and uh, in this case appears a force that is contrary to the motion. Uh, okay, I forgot. Well, Casimir, uh, vacuum, zero point energy in vacuum, zero point energy with boundaries, the, differ the difference is finite, and this is the result in three dimensions, three plus one dimensions, and uh, this uh, effect was measured, there is a, an arbitrary list of experiments, everybody knows, and uh, from 97 up to 2003, and uh, with respect to dynamical Casimir, I have to mention after uh, Franco stock from uh, tomorrow uh, today in the, during the morning, uh, when a mirror moves through the space at very high velocities, uh, some photon becomes separated from their partners and the mirror begin to produce light. This is very difficult almost impossible to measure using mechanical uh, mechanical movement of the wall in a, in a Fabry-Perot cavity, but uh, using analog of a moving mirror in a, in a quantum circuit or in a superconducting device, these people uh, prove uh, or show a quantum simulation of dynamical Casimir effect almost 10 years ago. This, this paper is with the same idea, but using an array of qubits or, or a squid, one after the other, in order to simulate uh, closed uh, cavities. Um, quantum friction, uh, this is a, a picture, but in general, uh, the idea is uh, we have two bodies which are not in contact, in relative motion, one with respect to the other, and there is a dissipative force that is opposite to the movement, which is due to the exchange of Doppler shifted virtual photons. Like uh, Milton's plane, uh, quantum friction is very, very small in magnitude, also short range, and we believe that experimental detection is very difficult, it's a, it's a real challenge 
in order to, to, to get a, an observable result. Here we propose a, an alternative to take a trace about quantum friction, which is measure some quantity in an atom or, or refer to an atom, which is, for example, the geometric phase accumulated by an atom which is moving at constant velocity in front of a dielectric or a metal in vacuum. The geometric phase, like a familiar of the very phase, just to, to fix ideas, uh, is manifested by as a relative phase between components of a superposition of the atomic states. Um, well, Franco used the same source of, of, <laughs> of talks than me, but it was, uh, it was early. Uh, this is uh, my, these are coming from my own background because I'm coming from quantum field theory in pure space time. Um, this is the idea to show the, the relationship between quantum fluctuation effects and how to uh, observe this vacuum fluctuation. Hawking radiation, UNRU effect, and dynamical Casimir. And my idea here, a difference what uh, Franco said, is that the, we have to note that UNRU, uh, Hawking radiation and UNRU effect only involve an observer, which is a, a, a crucially is important, uh, which is only a detects the state of the field and does not affect the mode of the field, like the uh, dynamical Casimir effect do. Uh, does. Uh, okay, therefore, we'll move to the point on contact friction. Uh, this is just an intuitive picture. Let's suppose we have an atom or a dipole in front of, of a metal. And of course, if there is no movement, nothing at all, therefore uh, the electromagnetic fluctuation implies a fluctuating, fluctuating dipole moment here, and this dipole has an image inside the, the material. There is a correlation between the, the dipoles, and the dipole-dipole interaction produce an attractive force that in this case is along the line that connects both particles, and this is the usual casimir polder force. When, uh, the, when the dipole or atom start moving, in this case to your right at velocity, velocity v, uh, what happened? In this case, like a this mirror is an imperfect mirror, like a metal or a dielectric. There is a delay in the reorganization of charges, and the image dipole left behind, this is what we call Doppler shift. Therefore, there is a phase lag in the correlations, and therefore the force now is tilted, is like this, and which this, this force has two components, the usual vertical Casimir polder, and the other one we call the, co the horizontal component, we call frictional force. Um, this, uh, this result, not for an atom only, but for two plates, was, uh, came from, from uh, Sean Pendry in 97. There was a, a, a very nice history about this uh, controversy and probably next week we'll have uh, a round, round table about all of this stuff. Uh, I, I don't mention it, but uh, the, the conclusion about this is this force is short range, small amplitude, avoids experimental detection so far, and okay, we, we want to, to say something about how can we uh, measure or, or detect friction, at least in non-direct way? Uh, 
in the case of the 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 primitive result of of uh, of pendry in which you have one dielectric and another dielectric dielectric one and two the simplest case this is the result for for the for the force the imaginary part of the uh, this relation with epsilon and this is linear with the velocity of course there is h barra h, h bar here and the dependence with the distance with the gap between the, the dielectrics. Also, there is uh, another dissipative forces due to the excitation of internal degrees of freedom because the, the two bodies interchange virtual photons and uh, this virtual photon excites their internal degrees of freedom and, and you can study both parts of the same effect uh, as we did. Um, there are some related effects like quantum Cherenkov when the velocity is bigger than the light velocity in the media, atom-atom interaction, atom play like Casimir Polder, or the force or the, the friction that a tip feel uh, when uh, we sample a surface, and of course the relation with dynamical Casimir in which we have real photons more than virtual with accelerated uh, uh, bodies. Um, here uh, we, we have a, a, an expression for the friction force, uh, which is obtained by a, a quantum field theory, a completely quantum field theory stuff, in which we consider um, a quantum scalar field, like a vacuum field, and two plates uh, formed by a collection of harmonic oscillators, all of them with the same frequency omega, big omega. And this was like a toy model in order to, to evaluate the force. And this is this a result for the, for the force per unit area uh, as a function of the velocity the dimensionless velocity, and this is this result is for a very thin plate, and this is for half spaces, two half spaces, moving at at the, at the given uh, like a function of the velocity. Um, these results are almost the same, the same, but for two uh, graphene sheets, which are moving. Um, uh, a, a, a constant velocity. This result is also obtained integrating out Fermi, uh, fermions in two plus one dimensions uh, and considering the, the vacuum polarization tensor of the, of the graphene. But what is interesting here is that even for speed of 1% of the speed of light, very high of course, the force, the friction force, is two order of magnitude less than the static Casimir, which is even less than the force between perfect conductors. Therefore, this result is, is so uh, depressive in order to, to imagine some experiment between graphene. Um, this, uh, this, uh, this result are now taking account an atom in front of a plate, non two plate, and in following the same idea of calculating uh, via, via a, a quantum field or electrodynamic field uh, procedure. Uh, here we have uh, the force, the force for different energy gaps in the atom. Uh, in, like a function of the velocity. Also, we calculated the correction uh, with the temperature, assuming thermal equilibrium. And uh, what is more important for, for my talk is that it's possible to evaluate, to calculate uh, the decoherence over the atom induced by vacuum, vacuum fluctuation plus friction force. I mean, 
we have an atom moving over a surface. The atom has an internal degrees of freedom that have, for example, let's say the two level atoms is the internal degrees of freedom. The atom could be in an excited state or in a superposition state between the excited and the ground state. And the atom, the center of mass of the atom is moving at constant velocity. Vacuum fluctuations induce decoherence over this superposition in the atom. And this decoherence comes from vacuum fluctuations and also by the presence of the plate. I mean, the, the presence of the plate reduces the decoherence time. More decoherence time implies smaller time of decoherence, but only for non-vanishing relative velocity. I mean, this blue line is the decoherence time when there is no plate. Lambda equal to zero is no plate, no coupling between the atom and the plate. And there is a, a constant decoherence time. And the, the other lines shows a bigger and bigger uh, coupling between the atom and the place. Also, this is a, like a function of velocity. Also, we can evaluate the decoherence time like a function of the gap in the atom, taking into account different values of the uh, velocities and different values uh, of the uh, characteristic frequency of the material. Uh, this was, again, a, a, a toy model because this, the model was a quantum harmonic oscillator, like a particle, uh, in contact with the bath, which is represented by a Klein-Gordon field and a scalar field. This is a toy model for the fully electromagnetic case. In this case, we have a, a scalar particle, if you know, if you want. Um, yeah, well, our idea here is to present some results concerning to, to evaluate the friction or some imprints on the, uh, of the friction on the geometric phase that an atom accumulates during the evolution. Uh, as a consequence of quantum friction, we can compute the non-unitary geometric phase for a moving particle and the presence of the composite environment. The atom, the, atom, the atom is coupled to a composite environment because it is coupled to the vacuum field and also to the plate, okay? Uh, and we show in which cases the coherent ca effect could in principle be controlled in order to perform a measurement of the geometric phase using a standard uh, technique like run, say, interferometry, a spin echo, or even quantum tomography of the state. Um, this is now the, the, real, the real model or the real problem, if you want. We have an atom, uh, which is a two-level system. Our atom has a dipole moment, two-level internal degrees of freedom with a gap, delta. This atom is in contact by a, a dipole, dipolar uh, coupling here with a vacuum film, and the vacuum, the vacuum knows there is a, a boundary, a, a metal here. Uh, the dipole interaction mix a state in the internal degrees of freedom like uh, sigma x, Pauli sigma x, and here uh, we have the, the usual to level system like a system. Okay, this, this, uh, the idea is to, to solve the, the full problem, the full problem with the interaction, and look at the evolution in time of the internal degrees of freedom for a given initial state. This is the, the block sphere in where we look at the evolution of the quantum system. Uh, the, the Hamiltonian for the interaction, uh, as I said before, is given in terms of the dressed photons, like uh, 
uh, Francesco and, and co-workers did some years ago, and we are using, in this case, a, a Drew a Lorentz uh, model for the metal. Um, when we quantize this field, we have a creation uh, and annihilation operator of photons, but in a, in a, in a general, in a wider meaning, in a wide meaning, because these photons are not the free photon coming from a quantization of the electromagnetic field in the free space, because we are quantizing the, the, the electromagnetic field, uh, taking into account the boundary, which is the metal. In this sense, the, these photons take into, into account the existence of a, of a boundary. Um, when we have a system which is the atom coupled to the, the environment, the environment is the field and the, and, the, and the material, we have to solve, in order to know the evolution of the internal degrees of freedom of the atom, we need to solve the master equation. The master equation is the equation of evolution of rho, and rho is the, the density matrix of the atom, of the internal degrees of freedom of the atom. This is, of course, the, the Liouvillean equation, the, the unitary part of the evolution, and these are the effects of the environment. Diffusion, normal diffusion, uh, anomalous diffusion, and dissipation. This is the, the usual or the standard uh, way in, in quantum open system. And this is uh, different pictures about the evolution Depending, depending, depending of the initial state, we can we start with the pure state on the surface of the block sphere, and as as soon as we as soon as, as soon as we are losing coherence, you are losing purity. Your purity is the radius of the block sphere, and the state goes inside the sphere. This is the the evolution, and the, this is a signal of decoherence. Your state is, is becoming more and more mixed and going directly to the center of, of the sphere. At least abandon the surface. Surface is radius equal to one and implies purity. And this is the, this is the, the purity or the, or the radius of the block sphere uh, solving this equation. No environment implies no decoherence. Right, the, the R is equal to one, and depending of different uh, uh, parameters, in, in, in this case, more coupling or more dissipation, or depending of the initial state, the decoherence is more and more effective uh, for our system. Um, for example, these are results concerning two different things. This is the density matrix for the, for the atom. Here we have the, this line are the different uh, matrix elements, for example, row, the, po the population, row 1 and row 2, 2. But the more important here is the coherence, row 2, 1, 2, which shows the loss of coherence. And here, this line is the, the purity of the system. You start with a pure state and immediately becomes uh, losing, losing coherence. Uh, this is another, this is a, like a function of time. N is the number of cycles, cycles in the evolution of, of an atom. And this is, again, uh, uh, the same result, the decoherent result, but for different uh, uh, different types of uh, materials. In this case, we are considering like uh, the metal is given by n dot uh, silicon, and these are these lines are for different velocities of the uh, of the atom of the center of mass of the atom. Uh, okay, this this is more or less the same. This is uh, the decoherence time like a functional of the velocity for different combination. Uh, the red line is using, is this correspond to use 
an MB center like our effective two-level system in front of a, a, a metal which is essentially an end of silicon and the, the, the light blue line is an rubidium atom and uh, well the, the, other, the other line doesn't matter uh, this, this plot here shows the dependence of the decoherence time with the orientation of the dipole. Uh, the, the results here are quite interesting because the decoherence time is the, 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 the shortest decoherence time occurs when the, the polarization is perpendicular to the dielectric surface, which was a very well-known result from David and Francesco and co-workers, uh, not for decoherence, but yes, for, for friction. And we, we get the, the same structure, but for decoherence time. And when, if you put the, the, if you have the polarization tilted, the coherence falls sooner when the polarization is in the direction of the velocity. Therefore, there is a link for us, very important for us, in which the larger the decoherence time, uh, the decoherence effect, sorry, the shorter decoherence time, the bigger frictional force. And the, the result uh, is, is enhanced up to factor 100, considering, considering a, an epicenter like a moving particle over an uh, un, uh, end of uh, silicon, compared with a rubidium atom moving over a gold, um, a gold coat uh, surface. Why is that? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> I, I, I'll show you. I'll show you. The the um, the important thing in order to what we can measure really is the following. Uh, just to mention geometric phase. This is the, the expression for the geometric phase when we have a system coupled to an environment, uh, I mean the evolution of the system is non-unitary, non-adiabatic, and non necessarily cyclic. The geometric phase is the argument of uh, blah, 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 in where, where these uh, states are the eigenstates of the density matrix, we calculated with the master equation before, and these are the eigenvalues of the uh, density matrix. Uh, this expression is, a, is geometric in, in nature, is gauge invariant, uh, reduced to the very phase in the adiabatic case, etc., etc., etc. It has been proposed some time ago uh, by these people, and we measure this uh, phase in using experiment of uh, resonant magnet, uh, nuclear magnet resonance, in uh, Waterloo by a group, the, a group of uh, Professor Laflamme. Um, this is a, a calculation, a numerical simulation about the, the correction of the phase in the case of our atoms with respect to the correction when the velocity of the atom is zero as a function of the velocity. In this case, for a given, for different orientation of the dipole, doesn't matter. But what we, uh, we see here is that the correction induced over the geometric phase is quadratic in the, in the velocity for small, even for small velocities. Uh, more importantly, this is the phase. This is the, the, the geometric phase, like a function of, of time. Uh, you can see the, the blue the blue the blue line here is the the, the usual berry phase which is is a stair uh, to two pi over cycle okay and this is the result when there is no environment if the atom is alone you have the berry phase uh, this is the the correction the phase sorry the phase when you have a, a, a very high velocity and there is the correction for velocities, for smaller velocities is given by this gap here. And what is important that is 
when time is big, the, the phase is, is going to accumulate. For each uh, go around the, the atom, the, the phase sum uh, uh, to pi. And in particular, when the velocity is relatively high, the correction at a given time could be at most 60% of the, of the original phase. Uh, here we have the same, the, the correction, this is the correction to the unitary phase when the atom, the atom moves at velocity u, and for different combination between uh, N silicon, NB center, which is the more interesting case, uh, N silicon and rubidium, gold, NB, gold and, and rubidium. Of course, this for us is the, the, best, uh, the best combination. We don't try with several, but, uh, but well, what, this was the combination Ricardo told me. Just try with this and, and works. Uh, okay, the, the, the experimental proposal, uh, roughly because the pro, tomorrow is your talk or? Tomorrow, Ricardo go, is going to explain uh, uh, better than me because I am a, a, a poor theoretician, uh, sad theoretician. The idea is to, uh, to uh, our setup could be the same, the, this one. We have a, a rotating table which could rotate very fast and we have the atom close to the surface, so close in order that the, the velocity is like a parallel velocity. Uh, the idea is to use an MB center like the, our, our effective atom uh, uh, at the tip of the modified atom force microscope. The distance between the atom and the plate can be controlled from a few nanometers to 10 of nanometers with a, a nanometer of resolution. Uh, and the, okay, we know that the MV center is, is a good candidate for studying geometric phases. There are some uh, reports of measures, about measures the, the geometric phase using this system. Uh, in, in this case, uh, okay, we, we need some huge number of repetition, doesn't matter. Uh, okay, the idea is more or less like this. Uh, in, the, in our proposal, the, we have the, uh, a silicon disc, which is laminated in metal. This, this coating could be with gold or end up silicon. Uh, and this is mounted on a turntable, which is which produce the the rotational movement. And uh, here we have the fiber interferometer, the cantilever, and the MB center in diamond uh, at the tip. And we are trying or are thinking in doing this experiment up this uh, gap, hopefully. Um, I left this for you, uh, and this uh, this is uh, this is probably the, the more uh, important result coming from uh, a huge numerical simulation under experimental conditions. In 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 this case, we we plot the difference between the correction induced on the geometric phase when the atom the, the atom is moving at velocity u minus the correction induced by vacuum when there is no velocity uh, with respect, uh, like a function of time. And here we, we plot this, this difference of the correction, which is the, the net correction for uh, N-silicon metal and gold. And in particular, uh, using this, the, this number here, we can see that at this velocity, Phi times 10 to the minus 4, uh, the correction is 
10 to the minus 3, which is uh, measurable with our te uh, actual technology. And in particular, uh, this is respect your question from today. When I, I'm talking about velocity u, this is, this is dimensionless quantity, which is given by the, the real velocity of the atom, the, the center of mass of the atom, divided by the gap and the plasma frequency. Therefore, we, we need to stay always in the non-relativistic limit, and in the very non-relativistic limit, Therefore, we have to, to, to reduce A and reduce omega plasma in order to, to have a, a, a big U, okay? And, and this is the reason why when we put gold or, or, or N-silica, silicon, uh, N-silicon works better for, for our uh, idea. Uh, okay, and... Um, our summary is we, we study the dynamic of a two-level system in motion relative to a semi-infinite metallic material in the electromagnetic uh, field vacuum. We have obtained an analytical expression for the decoherence time, and we also study the corrections induced on the geometric phase of the interna internal degrees of freedom of our atom this correction can be accumulated with time uh, and we have found or we have an idea uh, about how to implement a scenario to indirectly detect quantum friction, just measuring the geometric phase uh, of the particle moving uh, over the plate. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Fernando. There's time for some questions. Thank you very much. Very insight insightful uh, <laughs> talk, yes. And I, um, I have a question. Um, uh, did you think of uh, using non-local um, surface or material? Uh, in my opinion, it would increase the effect. Did you think about it? I don't know. You don't know? Then I, I know, do probably know. I can comment on that. We did it. You, you did it? Yes. And indeed, uh, it becomes even larger. I will show something about that. Uh, um, and your talk. And uh, the, the reason is that in no locality, uh, open another dissipative channel can open another yeah. dissipative channel. So that would increase the effect. Okay. And then. But there are, there are, there are another dissipative issues oh. apart from friction. Apart from friction, yeah. okay. And there, there, there is another thing. Uh, you showed this formula in the previous slide where you have uh, plasma frequency in the denominator, and you want to reduce it, right? To, yeah. uh, okay, so, so non-local material would uh, allow you to reduce this one. Okay. Just as cool. a comment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Fernando, I uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, as I mean, a bit. Uh, I, I have a question about this um, the coherence of this two-level system. Um, um, I mean, at some point, I mean, this two-level system should go to the ground state and become pure again, right? Or, but this yeah, is yeah, over yeah. a long yes, time yes. scale, or yes. so this. Yes, uh, yes. yes. We, we know this by by the evolution of the uh, of the density matrix. You can see that the, the purity mm -hmm. is going down and, and go up again. This what means that the, the, the state goes to the center of the block sphere. And so, but in another case, depending on the initial state, the, the, the system goes from the initial state to a given position in, inside the block sphere and back to the... And therefore, you need to, to do the experiment in a time a scale in which you have but able to But is do this related to the experiment, or, or no, the no, experiment general, is the geometric phase, but right? But it's a it's geometric phase in general, but this, this is uh, using the, the data or the parameters okay. Uh, which are but in, in, it was not clear to me how you access this geometric phase experimentally. I mean, uh, how what what is uh, your experimental signal that you are going 
how you tomography yeah. for example you 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 tomography is to measure the density matrix okay. if you know the density matrix the elements of the density matrix you may evaluate this oops uh, yeah you you may you you can evaluate rho if you mis measure rho you know the density the phase because this expression are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the, of the density matrix. Okay? This is quantum tomography. But also, another way is using a spin echo or, or Ramsey interferometry. If you, if you know the, the interference pattern, you know the, the phase. And we need only the correction of the phase, the, 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 the shift of the pattern, not the phase, totally the phase. Because you have a dynamical phase and the geometric part. We need only the topological part of the, of the phase. More questions? Thanks for the very nice talk. Have you considered the effect of the internal quantum state of the atom on the friction? No, uh, internal, uh, in what sense? As in uh, preparing, you know, uh, initially not in an excited state, maybe in a certain ah, in a position. position. Yeah. Yes, 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 we did it. In that paper of, uh, from this year, this one, last year. Mm -hmm. But not for the experimental proposal, we don't include this. But it's the same. Can you go to the next slide, the, the one you were on previously? So is your, uh, you say that evolution is unitary, but then you, is your Hamiltonian non-Hermitian in some way to get a non-unitary? The master equation is a master equation, it's non-unitary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And this, this work for non-unitary in particular, this definition of the geometric phase. Okay. But, uh, okay, so it, 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 uh, it, it asymptotes into the unitary evolution at some point? No, that's only when you, Cut the coupling between the system and the environment. Ah, okay, okay. This is for the non-equilibrium system. It's an open system. Any other question? What is important, sorry, that this definition exactly coincides with the Barry phase in the case your evolution is unitary. The gauge invariant is adiabatic, is cyclic, and so on. Okay, I think this is <laughs> it. Uh, let's thank um, Fernando again and all the speakers. And now.